Hi, this is Frank Carmody. Today we're going to go ahead and uh, learn a little bit about constraining a uh, assembly file. So let's go ahead. We're going to create one part file and one assembly uh, file here. So we'll see it down the bottom here. We have two tabs. First thing I'm going to do is save my part file. So I go ahead. I'm going to do it a little bit different. I click the, the main icon here and click Save. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, section assembly. Section. And then I'm going to save my assembly as section assembly assembly. Okay, so I have my two files saved. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and create the shape here. So I'm going to go back into Sketch 1, right-click, Edit Sketch. And I'm just going to create three lines. So I have my first line, my second line. Notice that I went, I went, I positioned my cursor right where the green dot was there. So I'm sure that my line is going to start and connect with the end of my other line. So let's go ahead and click here. Notice the dotted line down from the top of the first line. Okay, And then I'm going to continue up and finish my shape. Okay, Now I'm going to go ahead and dimension uh, the angle between these two lines. Okay, so I have a 35 degree angle initially. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and make this a Excuse me, we're going to go ahead and make this a 20 degree angle. Okay. And then we're going to constrain the two, uh, the two lines of the triangle uh, to be equivalent. So we're going to take the constraint and I'm going to constrain these two lines to be equal length. Okay, so we now have an equilateral triangle with a 20 degree, uh, with a 20 degree angle between them. I'm going to dimension the, the exterior line of this to be one inch. Okay, so there we have it. Right click done, right click finish sketch. And I'm just going to do a simple extrude on this because we're really just trying to get to the assembly today. Okay, so I click OK for a one inch extrusion. And there we have our initial shape. Okay, now just so that we can see it later, I'm going to go ahead and fillet the corners of this shape. Let's see how this works out. Okay, so I've gone ahead and filleted the corners just so we can see it later on. Okay, so we have our initial shape that we're going to use in our assembly. Let's go ahead and save it. Now the purpose of our lesson today is to, is to look at the constraints. So I've gone down, I've clicked into my assembly now, and I'm going to go ahead and place um, place some of the shapes on the assembly. So I click the place button up at the top. Now I'm going to go in and, as and select my assembly. So here's my section. I'm going to go ahead and open it. Okay, I'm going to place, uh, let's go ahead and just place uh, three of these. Right click done. Okay, so now I have three sections here on my assembly. Uh, I zoomed, right click done. And I can drag, notice that I can drag the, the second two, but not the first one. Okay, so the, what, the only constraints that we're going to use today are they're going to be the, the uh, mate constraint. So mate, you can see that um, there are four different types of constraints here. Mate, angle, tangent, and insert. Okay, uh, and then our selection arrows uh, are here, one and two. We always have to select two things. Now on mate, we have two different types of mate. So we have a mate mate and a mate flush. And you can see by the pictures, a mate is going to sandwich two things together. So it's going to take two faces of two objects and make them go straight together like, a, like two pieces of bread on a sandwich. A flush is going to line two uh, faces up. So they're butting up 
not necessarily against, against each other, but they're on the same plane. And you can see that from the drawing here. So let's go ahead and do our first mate. We're going to go. We're going to select um, the surface of one of our sections. So you see the red arrow facing up. It's important that you don't select the line. You notice you can select a line here. It's important that we just select the face of the object. Now I'm going to go down and I'm going to select the face of my second section. So notice I select the face where I want to stick the two together. I select the other face. Okay, so now these are mated. And I can click Apply. Um, now notice the constraint panel stays open. And this is good because of the fact that uh, I can, because usually you want to create many, many more mates. Now if I drag the second piece around, it looks like it's moving around in space, but in fact it is constrained on the same plane. And we can see this if we turn the cube around and just look at the section from below. Um, you'll notice that even if I move it, it's actually on the same plane and I'm just moving it around in space. So go ahead and drag it back. Um, okay, so the next thing that is that our, our object is to constrain these pieces so they absolutely cannot move uh, unless they, they can't move except where we want them to. So we're going to go ahead and do a flush. So we're going to have to flush these two planes. We could also do it on the back side, obviously. Okay, and I click Apply. Then we're also going to flush the two edges. So let's go ahead, and because these are uh, triangles, I need to go ahead and flush the edges. Now constraints can become fairly confusing um, for a lot of reasons. Um, Oops, cancel. I need to drag this out just a little bit so I can see actually see the where I want to constrain it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, made up the two sides here. So you notice that only the line is highlighted, and only the line is highlighted here. And I click Apply. Okay, so now this this uh, these two pieces are now fully constrained. Okay, so if I zoom back out, I can not move these. So notice the original piece I could not drag anywhere. So now that the second piece is constrained to the original piece, I can't drag it either. Okay, so it's fully constrained. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process on the other section. Okay, so I go to constraint again. Uh, remember it's a mate, mate. So I go ahead and select the the plane that I want to mate to the to the other plane. I click on the first plane, then the second plane. Okay, then I click Apply. Okay, so this is the workflow that you go through each time. Okay, then I need to I need to make it so that the fronts of the the pieces are flush with each other. So I do a mate flush. So I click here and here, then click Apply. And finally, I'm going to go ahead and and mate the two edges of the pieces. So this is an example where the cube really comes in handy. Notice I'm using the cube and the zoom tool to be able to see what I need to to be able to see and select the edges. So the really the the most difficult part of constraining is first to think through the constraints that you need. But secondly, is to be able to select those uh, those edges or those um, or those faces that you want to constrain. So notice here that because I'm too far zoomed out, I have a very difficult time selecting that edge. So what I need to do is use the zoom tool is to use the zoom tool to actually zoom in uh, on the object. Okay, so let's try that constraint again. Go to and I'm going to select one edge and the second edge. Okay, I click Apply and cancel to exit the tool. And finally, I'm going to save my assembly and go back to my original IPT and save the IPT. Okay, so there we have it. We have an assembly that I've used the, the mate constraint to successfully constrain three pieces together. Okay, it's your turn. Go ahead and create a, a new IPT, IAM part file, the mate and the mate flush both 
to fully constrain your IPTs inside your assembly. Finished, turn it in.